part two of Auditing 101 Employee Theft. Here are some further tips on how to recognize the signs of when your employee could be stealing from you. Employees who do not move a customer out of the computer when the customer actually vacates the space. This is the way that an employee can take a credit in the computer and either use it for that space, new rental, just a name change in the computer, or transfer the credit to another space. Rent credits are now in the most common form of embezzlement, and they are difficult to track since employees need to give credits for a variety of reasons. Employees who are too eager to hold auctions or never want to have an auction. Basically, these embezzlers are taking money from those customers who are often required to pay in cash. A disorganized office that has been a common means for employees to hide the embezzlement. They may just excuse missing contracts, mystery spaces, or petty cash problems as errors because they are so busy, understaffed, or their relief managers aren't doing their job. Personal problems such as suspicion of marital discord, gambling addictions, or dependents living with them. Suspicious and unexplained break-ins. Several of my former employees have been found breaking into our customer storage spaces. In one case, a different customer gate code was being used to get into the gate during early morning hours. This fact led me to believe that the thief was someone who had access to our management software. A site stakeout led to their demise. Employees who fail to overlock delinquent tenants. When employees fail to overlock, they may be using the delinquent customer's cash payment until they find another customer who is paying the same amount or credit they can transfer into the delinquent customer's account. The use of generic manual receipt books in the office and any missing carbon copies in manual receipt books. Cash receipts should be checked to see if they were recorded in the self-storage management software use of both a computer and a manual bookkeeping system at the property. This is a dangerous practice. It is too easy for employees to give a receipt for cash and not enter it into the management software. Deterrence. All theft in a combination of motive and opportunity. The opportunity to commit fraud is typically addressed through internal controls, which are your policies and procedures. The handling of cash and checks and credits given in the software should have specific policies, i.e. a written policy and a procedure manual. If you set up appropriate checks and balances, it becomes more difficult but not impossible to defraud the company. There are also times and situations when companies become more vulnerable to theft. Tax time, Christmas, employees with personal problems, e.g. IRS, gambling, divorce, employee vacations, change in ownership, and post-audit. To deter your employee's opportunity to steal, you should divide certain responsibilities. The employee should be limited in their ability to use credits in the management software. Customer credits can easily allow the employee to use many excuses for what is actually data manipulation for the purpose of embezzlement. A form of all credits and adjustments should be used to explain the adjustment and it should be signed by the customer and employee. Example being late fees waived, moved in specials, etc. In addition, all credits and cash payments should have a receipt filed in the customer's folder for all cash and credit card transactions. The owner or the supervisor who is not at the property should be the one who gives credits to the customer's account. This may seem cumbersome. However, it is necessary to have a reasonable insurances of internal control of the most common means of theft in self-storage. Since most storage properties have cameras throughout the property, it is a good idea to have at least one camera in the office over the desk area. Digital video recorders are enormously important pieces of equipment to be able to retrieve critical evidence of theft. In addition, hiring mystery shoppers to purchase items at the store with cash is another good way to determine if your employees are selling effectively and putting money in the daily deposits. Treat your employees fairly. Research into why typically good employees turn to theft can be summarized by understanding that when employees feel unfairly treated, they believe they are justified by making things right or fair by getting their compensation another way. Self-storage employees generally get very little training and are left to run the business with little direction. The more you lead and supervise your team of employees, the less likely they are to embezzle financial problems. Employees who are faced with embarrassing financial difficulties are a substantial problem. Typically, they are desperate for money and they don't want people to know how bad the situation has become. The deception can include their co-workers, friends, spouse, or any other relatives who would swear the person has no money problems. So when the auditor is looking at the books, they should look for the signs from the employee that they are under financial burden. For more educational articles, come to ministoresmessenger.com or check back to our YouTube channel for more educational content in the self-storage industry.